We're going to go over some of the slides and kind of give an overview of what campus safety does. And, and I want you just to keep in mind a theme that goes throughout how we do our work, and that is campus safety. We're not police officers. We're here as security. Many of us have law enforcement background, but that's not what we're here for. We are here because we are guardians for the campus. We're here to keep things safe. We uh, are not here to be making uh, arrests or treating this like uh, you know, police maybe in the community. We are here to make it safe for the people facilitating the education, the, uh, the faculty and the staff, and to make it safe for the students. Because part of all these great numbers that uh, Dr. Neary and, and the Chancellor and their administration have generated to get students to come to, to the campus, if the campus is not safe, they're not going to want to be here. So we do our best to be guardians, to look out for any warning signs of things that are going awry, and we stay in close communication with administration so that we can have safety and people can focus on just doing their job or being a student and excelling at, at what they do with, uh, with their student career. Um, when uh, Don starts getting into these slides right now, one thing that uh, I want you to take note of if you haven't done it is we have a, a phone number for campus safety, and that should be saved in your phone. So I know you all know how to dial 911. Some people work in an office where they have a, an emergency button that they can push and call for help. You can dial 333, but if you're out and about, it's good to have that, uh, that number saved in your phone so you're not trying to fish around and, and, and look for it. And then the other thing, um, and I have a little, you don't have a rave, I do. I have a rave. It, he's going to get into the, the rave uh, slide that talks about rave. But the other day I ran into uh, some folks that still have an old app on their phone that was the, uh, the live safe, live safe. That is not what the school subscribes to any longer and, and hasn't been for a while. So make sure you've got the rave guardian on your phone if you want to have it on your phone. And we're going to be working with the campus to kind of push that information out, probably set up our, uh, our kiosk um, out here in front of Johnson Center and start getting that information out so you can update your phone. But it's good to have those rave alerts on your phone because if you don't, they're going to go out over your email and then if you're out and about, you might not get it until later on. So I'll let Don get into that. He's going to talk about some of these slides when it comes to parking. Uh, Tiffany is our parking guru and she'll get into that and then I'll get into some things about uh, notifications and how we make notifications. So Don, I'll, I'll, so I'll stand over here so you guys can see the slides. Hopefully you can read them all. Some of the font is a little bit larger than others. Again, here's our, our phone numbers. That, um, they're accessible all over, all over the place on the websites. Uh, next slide. So campus safety over, so the lieutenant talked about it a little bit. Uh, we're all trained, uh, certified by California State Bureau of Consumer Affairs as licensed security officers. Many of us have law enforcement experience. Again, you know, right here alone, 33 years, 25. Some of the other guys um, also have law enforcement insurance that aren't here. Okay, we are not police officers. Our mission is not law enforcement. Our primary goal is to ensure a safe environment for, for faculty, students, and visitors. Uh, our officers provide visible and continuous controls on the campus so we're available for student staff. So we're going to be like, you know, Eric likes to walk around the campus a lot. You'll see him walking and walking. He'll put, you know, 14, 18, 20,000 steps a day walking the campus. Some of us use the, the golf carts. Then we have, you'll see us in the Port Explorers or the, um, uh, the Priuses. So we're constantly out and about. And we also have bicycle control as well. Um, so we do. Some of the uh, services we include are escorts to and from the vehicles during the evening hours mm -hmm. or for any other safety reasons. So the lights were recently out, out in the parking lot, six or seven, I can't remember. There was some kind of electrical issue. If you guys are to view video, because we have video cameras all over the, the campus, so they'll come into our office, we'll pull up the cameras, and if they can see the, the suspect or whatever the incident occurred, we'll save that form and they can go collect it from our district office later. <clears throat> uh, so we hold regular scheduled drills for fire, earthquake, and other emergencies. We're getting ready to do um, uh, some work in emergency preparedness training coming up here in the next month or so. Uh, we respond to first aid and medical situations. 
Uh, we're all trained in CPR. Every one of us has got us done certified CPR. Um, we will jump start. We do this frequently. Dead batteries. So we have we have a few, like two or three or four um, jump starters. So we'll come out to the parking lot, jump start the car for you, and, and get you on your way. And we handle lost and found property. So if someone um, turns in, pro finds property that's that in the D building or whatever it is, and bring it to mm -hmm. us. We'll document it in a report. So you guys need to know, understand. Oh, campus safety has lost and found. Come see us. Hopefully, we've got it if the person turned it in. Um, next slide. I've talked about the, the surveillance cameras. It's, it's good quality cameras. We have them at all of our uh, facilities um, through the common areas. Not a lot in a lot of the classrooms. Um, but mostly, mostly external, but some in, inside the uh, A building has some, I the S building has some. So we do have some internal, but most of them are external. Uh, cameras continuous record, and, um, you know, and, and it says here they're not monitored in real time. Sometimes we do. Sometimes we'll, we'll be sitting at our, our office and we'll just be watching the videos. Uh, Recorded images we retrieve should an incident occur to establish facts. Again, We'll save it at the district office. Next slide. Parky, <laughs> Tiffany. She's the, she's the mean one. <laughs> she gets to talk about it. So for those of you who have met me already, I'm sure it has something to do with parking permits and or parking citations. I, I love the aspect of finally getting out in the field. Yeah. I've been emailing you. I'm putting faces to things of finally getting to know all of you instead of just via email and uh, the parking permits. But, as you all well know, we have gone to a virtual system, and as of February 6th of this year, staff and students were required to purchase parking permits. Whether that be, and this is for students more uh, staff, we've got either for adjunct faculty, you've got the semester permits, and you've got our other staff that does the annual permits. But for students, we've got daily, weekly, uh, you have a rental car or whatnot. You can list all five, but when you look on your list, you can only check all three of, up to three of them. And when that check mark is there, that's what makes it active. So one of the things we ran into is when someone was applying for that initial one, they listed multiple vehicles, but didn't check any. And so when it went through, it just did the first one automatically. So then when someone drove that second vehicle, ended up with a citation. So learning lesson on all of our ends, just for better communication, that check mark is important. And we've got license plate numbers, not the VIN. So the virtual permits are connected to the license plate number. So whatever digit you put in there, when our license plate readers go by, that's what it reads and that's what it's attached to. So VIN numbers will not work. Let's say you have a temporary plate. Put that temporary plate in. Once you get your new plates, go ahead and press edit in the uh, second, you go online and put it in there and update it. One thing I did miss in case you don't know, no, okay. Where you update all this is through our new self-service. When you go into your self-service page, on the left-hand side, there's tabs. Go to the Academics tab, and under there, it'll say Purchase Parking Permit. An easier way, if you can remember, is rsccd.thepermitportal.com. I've also gone into our website at the SAC, and under the parking, I've added QR codes, if that makes it easier for you guys. Just trying to get as many options out there for everybody, so that heaven forbid if they don't have cash a certain day or a credit card yeah, or the, one of the meters isn't working. It's all those options. There's QR codes on the meters as well. Um, vehicles that are not listed active, that's what I was talking about in our subject um, for citation and also in violation of campus regulations. That's for example if a student has a valid permit but he's parked in lot four. Still going to receive that citation because he's parked in a staff lot even though he has a valid permit. So things like that. Parking regulations, if you want a list of all of them, they're found on our school's website. If you go under the parking icon, you can go to view, traffic, and parking regulations. If you have any questions about parking, I'll be here afterwards, but also my direct extension is 46348. Our last name is Tingeridis, common spelling. <laughs> Tiffany. Uh, yeah. Timely warnings and emergency notifications. So, emergency notifications are, are issued 
upon the confirmation of a significant emergency or dangerous situation occurring on the campus that involves an immediate threat to the health or safety of students or employees. Are you gone? Yes, sir. Don't mind. Uh, is this supposed to be my slide? Are you stealing from me? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's all you. <laughs> I'm trying to steal this thunder. I know. Uh, yeah, from time to time, we've, uh, we've got inquiries about how we make notifications, why we make notifications. And just bear in mind, the notifications that Campus Safety makes is different than the notifications you're going to get for like, from like the uh, public information officer. That's why there is a public information officer, because that's a different role than Campus Safety. And there's certain things that they have to put out. There's certain things that Campus Safety put, put out or puts out. But something that underlies everything that Campus Safety is going to put out is it's all about the goal of aiding in the prevention of similar occurrences. So we don't put stuff out just because people are thirsty to know something before it goes to the newspaper. We don't put things out that maybe are confidential, that aren't supposed to go to uh, the campus at large. The whole purpose is to keep people safe, to be guardians, and put out information that could be used to help keep you and students safe. So that's the underlying theme of all this. So there's two types, basically, of notifications. There's the emergency one that are issued upon confirmation of a significant emergency or dangerous situation occurring on the campus. It involves an immediate threat to health or safety of students or employees. So basically that's going to be where we have to evacuate because, for example, in the, in the science center when there was an experiment and there was some fumes one day and they had to evacuate that building. That, that's an emergency notification. Hey, everybody needs to clear out. And then if it goes out on a big alert, that keeps people from going into the building. Timely warning has more to do with the uh, Cleary type crimes, and it's issued for certain crimes that represent a threat to the safety of students or employees. These alerts are done in a manner that is timely and that will aid in the prevention of such crimes. <clears throat> the Cleary Act does not include a specific definition of timely. However, the intent of a timely warning is to enable people to protect themselves. Therefore, warnings should be issued as soon as pertinent information is available. And that said, that window of time is roughly determined by Cleary to be about 48 hours. So that's a, that's a pretty good span within a couple of days. And part of that is because you don't want to put out premature information, then it changes, now you're putting out more information and people are getting confused. And that, that adds to the overall confusion. The decision to issue a timely warning should be made on a case-by-case -case basis, considering the nature of the crime, the danger to the campus community, and the possible risk of compromising law enforcement efforts. For example, if there's an active investigation that police are working on, we don't want to get out ahead of them and be putting out information that could compromise something that they're working on to catch the suspect. So talking about what those certain crimes are, Cleary Act crimes are defined as arson, homicide, burglary, and that's burglary to a structure, not burglary to a vehicle, robbery, forcible and non-forcible sex offenses, aggravated assault, motor vehicle theft, which by the way includes when we have a little golf cart stolen from the campus, that's called a motor vehicle, domestic violence, dating violence, stalking, and hate crimes, basically the Violence Against Women Act crimes. And then when we decide to do uh, a rave alert, we typically, you know, we use the rave alert system in conjunction with Informacast. And Informacast is those messages that you're going to get over your telephones. So if you're sitting at your desk and you're not using your phone and you're not hearing something go out, it's going to give you the full text on your phone and you'll be able to, uh, to read it. So then in addition to everything else, if it doesn't fit into that category, from time to time, safety will put out bulletins or safety alerts Again, the goal is to help people not become victim of whatever the, the crime is that's happening. So for example, we had a few months ago, we had a rash of bicycle thefts from this campus. There was three or four taken within a two week period and it looked like it was kind of the same people doing it. We put out an alert about that. Hey, here's, here's what to be on the watch for. 
park your bike in a well-lit area, use the bike racks, use a proper lock. We showed a picture of what kind of lock you're supposed to use. And then we have a program available at the Campus Safety Office where if you turn in your substandard lock, we'll switch it out for a, a better U-lock. That is what we recommend to keep your bike locked. And we had, in fact, I can't think of one bike theft, maybe one, that we've had since that bulletin went out. We had, uh, in a couple week period, a few months ago, a rash of uh, two or three uh, catalytic converters that were stolen here on campus. And so, okay, that's something that maybe if we put that information out, people can take steps to prevent themselves, prevent themselves from becoming a victim. So the information was, uh, hey, park in a well-lit place, you know, don't park far away. Um, do what you can to protect your catalytic converter. If you're able to, we, we put what kind of, kind of device you can have installed on there to help protect yourself. We let people know what cars are the ones that are being generally targeted. So maybe you're in a family that has more than one car and if a Prius is being targeted and you could drive you know, a Chevy that day until this kind of calms down, then you could make yourself safe. You can take steps to prevent being a victim. And then uh, more recently we had a bulletin go out where um, a student had been habitually parking across the street at Target trying to save money on parking fees and she was in a hurry to get to class, she left her trunk open, she left her purse there, she went inside the car to get her backpack, when she went back to the trunk the purse was already gone. Didn't even see who took it, so somebody just zipped by, grabbed it and, and that was it. And so we put that information out because, number one, it's illegal to park across the street in that commercial lot. They have signs saying no student parking. But also, you know, our parking here is pretty affordable and you get the added benefit of you have security is patrolling around and checking to see if the parking lot is safe. So when you're feeling like, man, this is really crummy that people get tickets, well, part of the reason of looking around to see who's not in conforming with, with the rules that could be somebody who's here staking out a car to steal it, burglarize it, to steal from a student. So it's just another way of helping keep the campus safe. And during those patrols, if uh, a, a person who wants to do harm to a student or to faculty sees a uniform officer moving around, they're probably gonna go somewhere else so that it's easier and they don't get caught. So that's, uh, that's basically how we do timely warnings. And again, it's, there's no hard, fast rules. Um, what we do, though, is on our campus safety website, there is a, a crime log. And so any crime that comes to our attention that we write a report on, we put it on the safety website. Everybody's free to go there, and you can look and see <clears throat> what the crime was, where it happened, what time it happened, and there's not a lot of detail there, but again, that's by design because sometimes the information is confidential. We're just putting information that's going to help you or help the students to stay to stay stick to stay safe. That that's the bottom line. So, if you can go to the next slide, and then if you have questions on anything we're bringing up, when we get to the end, we can uh, backtrack and you can raise your hand, and we'll we'll go for it. I feel like I got two or three more slides. Maybe. Anyway, um, general information about emergency response and evacuation procedures can be found on this website at these two locations. Next slide. Building evacuations, I'm not going to read this, but um, familiarize yourself with, with your buildings and the campus and know what, what your evacuation routes are and where you're going to go. There's a map um, on, the, on the website that we will show. I think it might be next. There it is. So that's, this is accessible on the, on the Santa Ana College website. This is the evacuation routes. Um, so, you know, depending on what it is, an earthquake or an active shooter or whatever the situation is. But again, it's, it's up to you guys to know your buildings and what the evacuation routes are. Next slide. I'm not going to go too much into the active shooter slide, but um, <coughs> if there's an active shooter, there's a video on the, on the school's website as, as also on YouTube. I guess where we might have gotten it from, called Run, Hide, Fight. It's about five or six minutes long. Basically, active shooter comes on campus. I tell people, wherever the, the sound is coming from, run in the opposite direction, 
as long as you can. Don't stop and hide behind a car. Just keep on going, right? Run to the 7-Eleven out across the street. Um, because the more distance you put between yourself and the shooter, the more difficult it is for him to get you. Um, hide if you're inside a building, lock the doors, turn off the lights, um, put a barricade up, silence your phones, and hide as best you can. Hopefully, the, if, if it does happen, he comes, he checks the doors locked, he'll move on to the next, the next room. And then ultimately, fight would be find whatever two or three or four or ten of you are in a room. If, if the shooter enters your location, I don't want you guys to go actively looking for the shooter, enters your location and it's imminent, then you, you fight. And you grab whatever you can, whether it's a, a chair, um, one of the water bottles, right, um, a fire hydrant, a fire extinguisher, not a fire hydrant, you have to be like, oh. <laughs> fire extinguisher, and then hold the pen and you can, you know, do whatever you have to do to protect yourselves. Um, next slide. Rape Guardian. So the lieutenant was talking about the Rape Guardian. We should all, I have it on my phone. Students should be downloading this, this app. It's called Guardian. It's a little blue icon. It looks like it's got a shield on it or something like that. Download it. From there, you can call. Um, there's six, at least on mine, and it might be updated. There's six little icons. You can call, hit, hit the button once to call 911. You could hit another button that will call directly to um, campus safety. You can also submit tips, and there's a list of um, like eight or nine different. Oh, well, here it is. I put it on my PowerPoint. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I did this, so I would forget. So <laughs> there are different um, things. You could submit a tip for assault, accident, bullying, disturbance, harassment, and you can be anonymous on these. There's a way to be anonymous on this. But this is not for an emergency. Emergency 911, we, we need something right now. Person's injured, there's a shooter on campus, whatever the case. But this is the type of stuff, if you see graffiti somewhere, you can, you can send a tip and say, hey, I saw two guys tagging the, you know, the wall, or whatever it is, and here's a general description of them, and you can be anonymous. Um, suspicious activity, thefts, all that kind of stuff. So that's what the Rave Guardian Don, is, is for. Is it, I just wanted to just okay. mention um, why, why you were introducing it, a little before you were introducing it when, when uh, Lieutenant Waters spoke about it. It's a two minute process to download and have all set up. So. Yeah, super easy to download. Um, you know, it's just, so our dispatcher will get, she, our dispatcher will get, if you submit a tip, it goes to her computer, then she can, you know, notify one of the officers, we can go out and we can handle whatever it is. If, again, if it's an emergency, you dial 911. Um, so the, the Rape Guardian app is a good app to have for the students, I think. So if, if anyone ever has any questions, it's on our website. You go to the campus safety, um, go to the campus, uh, the college, campus safety, and then there's a link for the Rape Guardian. I think that's all on my slides. <laughs> okay, anyways, um, we're going to open up the questions right now, and so any questions anyone may have. Um, you, you mentioned that really quick, sorry, that uh, you talked about, I, I think, that it, you know, anybody that has involvement uh, here on the campus, sort of faculty, staff, students, administrators, I think, I was just, while you were talking again, I was going through the app. Yeah. Really nice app. Really nice app, super simple. And um, again, I mean, I can click on it right now and I can submit a tip. I can call the campus safety or I can just hit 911 emergency and please call that way you're not fumbling around trying to hit 911. It's literally, it's literally that button and that button. Or maybe something else that wasn't brought up. Uh, if you have any questions, we can do our best to, uh, to answer the questions. And then maybe if you would, for the whole group, go uh, just say who you are and where you work, please. Hi, I'm Maria Briseño. I work uh, for Student Services. Um, I want to know a little more about the emergency buttons on our phones. Uh -huh. And is does everybody have them, or where do they go to when you push that button? Yeah, not not everybody has that button. Okay. There's certain administrative offices that that have it. And Ms. Tiffany, do you uh, or can you describe um, about the process with somebody? 
pushes the emergency button on their phone in, a, in an administrative uh, office. So Marie already knows. She's just trying to give you a cookie in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, we have a couple added features when it comes to buttons. There is uh, buttons on your phone, and this is only to certain phones. If you do want to end up getting one, send me an email, and I can get you added. But they, for the ones who have requested it and we have put it on there, there's ones that automatically came on, for example, uh, the financial aid, not financial aid, uh, our cashier's office and whatnot, so that they can press this button and it says SAC service, or service request. So it looks, it doesn't say, you know, panic button or call the MSAB. So if someone's able to read that screen and you just press that button, what happens is the screen will go blank for a second and then it goes back to normal. What that does is alerts our dispatch, our security cell phones if you're off hours or on the weekends, and it sends an alert saying that that button has been activated. The first thing my dispatch will do is get on the, our radio and dispatch two officers to your location or to that desk location. The next thing she will do after officers are already responding, she will call that number back. If you can't answer, please do, whether that be because it's accidental or because uh, that person is out of earshot. What that does for us is if we can get additional information so that we're not just walking in blind, any information we can get prior to our arrival helps us tactically speaking and makes it better for the students and everybody involved. However, if you can't, let it ring. Our dispatch will get back on and say no answer. That kind of heightens it a little bit for us. If you did it accidental and you say, no, it's accidental, sorry, I just accidentally pushed the button, we will still respond. You could be under duress. We don't know for sure if you actually, you know, if it's serious or not. We usually can tell a little bit about that. You'll say it's accidental versus, oops, my, you know, and you can tell the lightheartedness. It does, again, help us when we're responding. Uh, there is our lockdown buttons. Aha, back corner. They're the red ones with the clear. So what those do, they're in the new buildings. You lift that up and push that lockdown button. What that does is it locks down every door. You can still get out, but bad people can't get back in. The down, there's a lot of pros and cons to it, but just a, something to keep in mind. If you press that lockdown button and you're in a room by yourself, it's helpful. But if you're trying to still get out, because again, like Dawn said, run, hide, fight. If you still have the opportunity to run, as you're running out, that door is now open. Anybody can get in. So it's not foolproof in that aspect of, because we want you still to be able to get out if you can. Uh, the last one is also in the new buildings, there are some people who have a button. It's a panic button. It looks just like the ones that you have at base. And they're only in the new buildings. And they're also connected. They do the same thing that a phone button would do. They're very similar. So you can't get the button that goes under your desk, you end up with a phone. So does that, if anybody ends up wanting to get, get one, Please feel free again, email, or give me a call. And if you don't have one and you feel like nobody loves you, that's, that's <laughs> not the case. It, it's, most of it is in places where the public tends to, to show up. So if you're in a place that you don't usually have contact with the public, that's probably why it's not there. But that doesn't mean we can't put it there. Questions? I, I like this. Get the full tummy and then the questions kind of go away. Hi. Um, you your My name is Rob Santa I work at Humanities and Social Sciences Division as a Division Administrative Assistant. Um, about the cameras, how is the recording system like chain and how long does the Australian videos are kept? For instance, so I expand to the question if an um, incident or a crime happens, Riding a bike, it gets stolen, and for extra reason, I forget that I left my bike in there. And right. then I come back next day, it is video kept 24 hours or a certain time lapse. I, I believe that certainly within a few days it's still going to be available, but I think uh, anywhere from a couple weeks to 30 days it's going to end up being overwritten because the system can only stock up so much. So definitely, if something happens, you want to be able to report it as soon as possible um, and make sure that we capture it. And then once we get it, then we can save it to the side and it's safe, you know, however long we choose to. Once we uh, copy it out of the system and, and put it to the side. 
And even though there are a lot of cameras at this campus, obviously we cannot cover every nook and cranny. So sometimes we don't have you know the right angle or whatever, but we'll we'll always look to see if there's uh, evidence that can uh, help, especially in catching somebody who's committed a crime. One for you, LT. I'm uh, Chris Wild from the campus store downstairs. Um, so occasionally we hire student workers, and occasionally we'll get somebody who is kind of impinging on their space when they're trying to work. Um, sometimes it's a male with a female, and they're young workers. Um, most of the times the, the girls in question handle it themselves. But the other day we had a guy who was really brazen, and he was there like an hour. I didn't realize, but. He was on the floor and he was just hanging out there and then another student told me, came back and told me. So um, I took the girl off the floor and said, is this a friend, it's a family member? And she's like, no, it's awkward. And he keeps asking me to go to dinner and concerts, right? So I went out and he told me, you know, reasonably, you're kind of competing for the ability to give me some customer service. He didn't want to leave. And I said, well, I'm going to have to call security to go. So then he cussed me out in Spanish. I returned the favor. Just kidding, Dr. <laughs> <laughs> Afterwards, but definitely, if somebody feels afraid, no matter what you're doing, walking to your car or doing your job or going to class, call campus safety. Again, we're, we're here to be your guardians, and we're here to provide customer service, and that that's what the team is all about. And we'll sort through what's the best option. And for example, with, with this situation, you know, there's some tools at our disposal. If the if the person is a student. Well, now there's leverage through the due process system to do something with that student. And if they care about their education, they're going to want to get in line with the rules, because otherwise you get suspended for a week or two, and that's already very hard to make up. And you know, you, you run the risk of maybe even getting uh, suspended for a whole semester or up to a couple of years. So if they care about their education, that's leverage to get them in compliance with the rules. If it's anybody who's interrupting, to my understanding, and the, anybody who's one of the administrators here could correct me if it's different, but it, if um, somebody is interrupting the educational process, it's not open to do that. You can't come in and just do that. And so we will deal with it that way. Now we, because we're not police officers, we're, we're not going to be arresting them. We have the same powers of arrest as each of you have. But what we are able to do is we're able to call up the police department and speak their language and get them to respond and possibly arrest that person for trespassing if they won't comply. But what I really want you to do is don't hesitate. Call us. That's, that's what we're here for. We're never too busy that we can't come. And, you know, I don't know if it was on the list of what Don showed, but one of the biggest things we do is just lock and unlock doors. And I know sometimes people say, ah, I'm sorry, officer, you know, you know, I know you're busy. No, that's our job. All of that is our job, to come and take reports, to make you feel safe, to help you get in your car if you lock the keys in, to help you jumpstart your car, whatever we can do. I mean, I, I've driven my golf cart past somebody that was carrying a, a big flat of water on a hot day and picked them up and drove them to their car. Whatever we can do, customer service, and being a guardian and keeping people safe, and not only being safe, but feeling safe is a little bit different. I really want you, and so does my team, we want you to feel safe. And I think that this campus is very safe. I'm, I'm out and about all over the place, and I, I think it's safe. And kind of my, my measurement is I've got four daughters, and they're all adult daughters, but you know they're my daughters, and they're, they're still kind of young. And I would feel completely safe to have them, or confident to have them come here, take classes, to be present on this campus. That, that's, Michael, if I feel like my daughters could be here, then I feel good about it. So this campus is safe. The surrounding community, the crime is somewhat high. They've got some high numbers on various things. 
that doesn't really bleed over into our campus. This is like a little kind of sanctuary. And for the most part, we have very little that happens here. And, and it's, it's really a great place to, to be. And a lot of that has less to do with the campus safety people and maybe more to do with, you know, we really harp on, hey, if you see something, say something, and people do. They see something that's out of line, they call us up so we can check into it, and we kind of get on things real fast before it escalates into something. Yeah, so absolutely call us, and then we'll use the tools that are available to deal with it to, to help make your cashier feel safe. Yes. Um, I'm Rebecca from the Health and Wellness Center. One of my nurses and um, a couple of my employees were walking out the other night, and they saw like a homeless person out in the Johnson Center with all their stuff all over. And they didn't know if they should call security or not, but it was evident that it didn't look like it was a person who belonged. It them feel uncomfortable because so should they have called security? Or? Absolutely. So knowing what you know now, yeah. You'll call. And then just because somebody is unhoused or homeless or transient does not mean we're automatically going to kick them out of the campus. If they are maintaining themselves and you know they're not, again, disrupting the educational environment, then they're going to be allowed to stay. As soon as they get out of hand and, and they're disruptive, then we have to deal with them as possibly trespassing or give them a warning and say, hey, this is what the rules are, this is what you can and can't do, and if they comply, that's great. And if they don't, they don't have a right to just keep doing that and, and making everybody else's educational experience, you know, bad. But always call. Rebecca, right here, this list. That student, that person you're talking about with all this stuff out, just so you know, we are aware of he is a student, so we need, we've seen him and carries his stuff in black trash bags, but he is a student, he is homeless, but he's taking engineering classes, so we were aware of him. Well, and that's what I told my employee. It's like, if you call security, they'll see if this is a student, and then they'll work with them, or if it's somebody who's a transient, mm -hmm. then they'll work, work with them to get them out, so. I think that, did you also connect them with the drive center? We have, okay. We have uh, Jennifer Del Rosa was involved, yeah, definitely. Um, even a shower. First week of school, he came to the admissions office while I was on lock at 7 a.m. and he was carrying a big old bag like Santa Claus, and I'm like, and he wanted services, and I'm like, it doesn't open till eight. Then he he told me his uh, you know ordeal that he was a homeless student. I he didn't have an ID on him, but I did check him, and he was right there. He came and got a student ID. I uh, let him know that he can use a shower. He wanted to use the showers, so we would unlock it for him. Um, when he would call for us. Okay. And I know many of you know this already. You've been here, you've been a, a higher ed much longer than I have. But we have many students that come here and they've got issues. You know, there's, there's seen and unseen disabilities. You have veterans that have some issues. You've got people that are unhoused, people that uh, don't know where they're going to get their next meal from. We have people that have mental issues. And so, you know, everybody comes here with their own truth, right? And we have to respect that and work with them on it. If it just gets to the point where it's, you know, we have our phone ringing off the hook because people can't go to class or if it's being disruptive, then we have to deal with it. But our whole goal is to try to help people and come up with solutions, not to be, uh, you know, that club that's coming down on everybody and saying, you can't be here, you know, you don't fit what a student looks like, you gotta go. That isn't the way we operate. Any other questions? Yes. Um, Christina Ken Wagner with the Career Center. I think the hardest part really is all the, the not the extreme cases, right? And so we had, uh, and Liz is aware of this because her sister Maricel is with us, but we had an incident where um, a student had come in for counseling, but she came with a friend or a, maybe a relative who isn't a student and that person was I wouldn't say clearly intoxicated but you could smell the intoxication like you know even from a couple of feet away and while he was coming to our center he tripped and fell somewhere and he got he's starting to bleed but not like in that 911 emergency so I think when you get to that level of like okay this isn't a student the person is intoxicated possibly 
but didn't feel like a threat to us. Mm -hmm. But then was bleeding, so we were kind of like, but you know, but not a student, so couldn't be helped at the student wellness center. Um, the we we called campus safety. They came. They were with us for a little bit. There, there was no there was no danger, but I think that's where we feel a little bit like we're not sure. I mean, we we do call campus safety just because. They're there, and yeah, I actually really like people. that they're called campus safety and not like UPD. But it's it always feels like a little bit of a gray area, like when they're not a student, but they're with a student. They're kind of intoxicated, possibly, but they're not unruly. They have an injury, but they're not 911. Like that's where we feel a little bit like we're not quite sure what to do, other than you know just call campus safety, so. You know, my mom had a saying about stuff that was stored in the refrigerator, and she said, when in doubt, throw it out. <laughs> I learned that when I was a little kid, and I, I've never got food poisoning or anything. <laughs> um, so the new saying for you guys is, when in doubt, call campus safety. Um, it, if it's gray area or we're unsure, we respond, we have first aid kits, we could help that person if they're bleeding. Uh, we could, you know, talk to them. Most of our officers have really superior communication skills, and they can talk somebody down or talk them into, uh, hey, can you wait in your car? Or all kinds of things can happen. And our whole thing is to keep things, you know, de-escalate it, make things go smoothly, let the student handle their business, and, and make sure you, you feel safe. But if you guys don't leave with anything else from this presentation, just remember, call campus safety. Don't ever feel like, gosh, I don't want to trouble anybody. Because we, we really are probably the best equipped to, to help and, and to help mediate a, a situation that comes up. The gray area ones are the real severe ones. I was really hoping somebody's going to ask some questions about parking for Tiffany. <laughs> <laughs> today again from a student there's a lot of false information on social media that has actually as a domain of our name San Ana College and I have to always walk away from it I always have to tell students that's not us mm -hmm. and walk away from it and or parents who will come up to me and say is this you that the hell this is happening no that's not us that's not us I, I have I don't have that issue or, or I just talk about the programs and the wonderful things Center College does. I say, I'm an alumni of Center College. I would love to see those come down. I really would. Because they give such a false advertisement on Center College. And a lot of people think that because they read it, oh, it really is happening there. And it's not. Well, like they say, you can't really trust things that are on social media, right? Mm -hmm. Especially things that have been uh, just anonymously put out there. You know, who knows who's putting that information out and how they manipulate or twist it or what their what their purpose is. So, you're you're absolutely right. You know, look look to the True web website, the actual Santa Ana College website. Yes. Um, you know, look to the uh, El Don website and read about the stories that are going on on the campus. Look at the legitimate news sources that are out. You know, in the community newspaper and the Orange County Register and read those stories. And, and also, when in doubt, you know, ask, ask your boss, you know, run up the, the chain of command and say, hey, I'm seeing something, I thought this was troubling, is this true? And, you know, I'm sure they can get to the bottom of it, you know, pretty quick. But that's the thing, you know, nowadays everybody's got their Facebook and their Twitter and all that, and you have to be careful. You know, many of you in here have, uh, uh, you know, higher ed degrees, and I know that when you were doing your 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 research, you learned what's a, what's a credible research to go to, and, and what's the stuff that to stay away from. That's you know equivalent to like the uh, the Inquirer. Is there still the Inquirer? I used to see it at the grocery store. <laughs> but you're you're right, and just you know, putting out the truth kind of squashes down that that kind of stuff so just stick with the truth and it'll be okay anything else 
Yes. Yeah. So I challenged the app, um, and I went into the submit part. Um, if something is happening in real time and it's possible, we should call security first Please. instead of doing the app thing. It would be quicker to call security so that we can just get it without it going through that. Okay, that and function. then, okay. But if we're not, then we should use right. the app if we're not able to call. And the best part about having Rave on your phone is you'll get that alert. If you're not at your desk or in your office or are able to access your email at that point, you'll get that alert immediately, which is good even if you're at home, because let's say you know, you're getting ready to come to the campus and you hear that we're on lockdown and there's an active shooter and you get that on your rave alert, then you know, oh, I need to not go down there and add to the problem and put myself in danger. So that's the, one of the best reasons to have it on your phone. Um, you have our numbers and you have our names and our emails and again I appreciate you coming and sharing uh, lunch and, and letting us uh, chat with you and please if you ever have any questions or inquiries we don't have to have a special town hall for it just uh, reach out we're all friendly Don doesn't look like it but he is <laughs> um, President Neary do you have anything else? No, I just, again, I want to thank you for your time. The officers will be here. I will be here. If you want to come up uh, to me, if you have any uh, suggestions, we appreciate your feedback. Like, I took a great note from the presentation where um, I'll have uh, the public information officer work on a great app alert notice and send it out uh, fairly soon so everybody knows about it and knows how to use it and then can be referenced to the website. And then I will, but any... And again, uh, I, I just wanted to take this moment to thank Campus Safety. Um, we recently had an event on campus, and we always, I'm Benithia Hubbard, Vice President of Student Services. Um, we always have welcome opportunities with our outreach team, our student service team for the beginning of the semester. And this year, you joined in that effort by having a booth, a table outside, so students could come meet you and see you. And you were also helping. Uh, to direct our new students on the campus. So I wanted to extend a heartfelt thank you to all of you for that. I really thank appreciate you. it. And I want to thank you to all of you again for making us feel safe, making us feel welcome, and the community town hall. And we'll do one more round of applause. Yes. And if you have any friends, we have some to-go boxes. <laughs> Hi. 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 Hi.